Welcome back to the Tool Crib. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about wire crimping and how to do it effectively. Now, if you're new to wire crimping, you may be surprised to know that there is actually a right and a wrong way to do this for particular types of terminals. So in this example, I have a 14 gauge stranded wire, which I have connected or crimped on two ring terminals that are sized perfectly for this wire. While the two connections look like they're done exactly the same, one of them is done extremely well, the other one is very much lacking. I'm gonna show you how to avoid making this mistake. And this is gonna be true of a lot of your end terminal connections, such as rings and forks and spades and bullets as well because of the type, just depends on the type of connector that you're using. Now, we're also gonna talk about some of the tools that can be used for this and which ones work best in which application. You have some that are your cheaper made ones that are gonna be found in your kits that you'll find in automotive parts stores, some that are integrated into wire strippers like this one. The Gardner Bender here is more of a specialized crimp and this is gonna be for ferrules. And then we have what I think is the best of the group is, and not necessarily this brand, but this is a Klein 3000 CR. This is a ratcheting type crimp connector. And the benefit to these is they have a wide variety of jaws that you can use within them in order to do different types of crimps. Now, some of the crimp connectors that you can use are bullets, male and female, and spades, male and female. This is one you want to have a wire that you can crimp together, make a solid connection, but at some point you want to be able to take it apart. You'll find these a lot on small engines, stuff like that. Then we have the ferrule connectors. These are used for when you want to uh, terminate your wire at a at like at a bus bar or something where it's actually going to have a screw that comes down and makes the final connection. And the reason for the ferrule is to keep all of the different strands of the wire compacted so that when the screw comes down, it doesn't splay all that wire out. Then we have forks and rings, and then we have splice connectors as well. Now you can get these in a couple of different varieties as well. So all of these with the brighter plastic on them, those are insulated connectors. And when we get to the more translucent uh, colors those are going to be for heat shrink connectors so you will be able to perform the crimp and then go back and heat shrink it and then make a very good connection and then we have bare connectors as well which are actually my favorite because it allows me to see the crimp uh, better i can make sure that i've got a good solid crimp connection and then i can go back and use heat shrink on top of that in order to make a very solid connection well let's get started i'm going to show you how to avoid making this mistake first. So what constitutes a good crimp versus a bad crimp? Well, even though these two look very similar to one another, one is done very well, the other not so well. And we're gonna look at a non-insulated terminal in order to better highlight this. So the way these are formed, and this is gonna be true of rings, spades, forks, things of that nature, in terminals for the most part, they are gonna have a seam on one side and the other side does not. Now, I use a little higher quality of terminals, and so these actually have a solder on the seam as well to prevent the splaying open. But what we want to avoid is when we're setting these in our crimpers, and we're specifically talking about uh, the non-insulated crimpers where they're gonna have a punch on one side. We want to avoid having the punch on the seam side because we run the risk of, if we were off center just a little bit, then we run the risk of only crushing down or crimping down on one side and the other side would not crimp down and make a solid connection. To avoid that, you want to shift this around and always make sure that the seam of your terminal is on the half moon side where it stays formed and that way it will make a good solid crimp connection. So in this example, if we look a little closer at the end of this one on the one that's done correctly, you'll notice that the two seams come down and they collapse very well on the wire. And then we have our pierce point on the back or where our punch hit it, it makes a very solid connection. On the opposite one, where it was done not quite as well, you'll notice that we crushed down on one side, but the other side did not come down and form a good connection. And while this still holds and you know passes the pull test, it still could be done a lot better. And this is what we want to avoid. And it's simply a matter of orientating your terminal connection in the proper orientation. 
One quick thing that I wanted to highlight with these types of connectors is you'll notice that in a lot of connectors, they're embossed with different numbers. In this particular example, these two ring terminals, the first one is quarter inch. The quarter inch is telling us the size of the ring itself. And then below it, it has a 12-10. That is the two gauges of wire that this particular terminal is useful for. In the second example, this is also quarter inch for the size opening the hole, but this is for 16 through 14 gauge wire. And then with your different color codes on your terminals like all of these splice connections the red are good for the ranges differ from manufacturer but as a general rule from about 22 gauge to 18 gauge is what these are good for the blues are good from uh, for 16 and 14 gauge and the yellows are good for 12 gauge and 10 gauge and this is true of your insulated and your heat seal terminals as well Another thing to keep in mind is not all terminals are constructed the same. As an example, we have our non-insulated uh, splice connector here. You'll notice that there is no seam on either side of this. So this is a solid connector where you can use the crimp in any orientation that you want. The same is true of this version. This is our heat sealed terminal and it also does not have a seam. But if we look at the more, a cheaper version of this, and this may be a little bit difficult to see, if we spin that around there, there's actually a seam in this particular terminal connection for this splice connection. And so it's important to understand or realize whether or not you do have a seam as opposed to one that doesn't have a seam in a little higher quality of a terminal connection, especially when it comes to splice connectors. Now let's look at several different crimpers. And for the most part, we're gonna be using integrated crimpers that come with wire strippers with the exception of our ratcheting style. That way we can get a kind of compare and contrast which one works better in which situation. And we're gonna be doing these on non-insulated crimp connections so we can better visualize which one gets us a better quality crimp. Now we'll also test out some insulated versions as well. I think I'll use these three. We'll switch out the jaws on the ratcheting style and then we'll use the insulated non-insulated crimp version on the bottom here and then we'll test them against this one as well and see what kind of results we get. Okay, the first one up is gonna be our Klein Curves. The first thing we wanna do is we wanna set our terminal in here in the proper orientation. And I'm gonna flip this around this way. Wanna make sure that our punch is on the opposite side of the seam. Get it set in there, and then we can set our wire inside. Once we have it set, we can just crush it down, see what kind of crimp we get out of it. Now in this particular case, because of that diamond style or pyramid style of punch on the back side it gives us a very very solid crimp this is one of my favorite set of crimpers for manual crimpers and you notice on the other side it does a very good job of crushing down the seam and gives us a very solid connection the next up is the carlisles they also have a i, I really like these on 14 gauge and below they've always done me a very good job and we're going to do them in a similar fashion let's make sure that we have our seam opposite of our punch get it set in there properly so that we are going to be crimping in the right position. Then we'll slide our wire in there. And now we can make our crimp. Now this has a little bit wider version and it flattens the crimp out a bit more than what we found with those Klein curves because it's more of a, a blunt tip on that punch, but it does a very good job and the wire is sealed in there extremely well. So both of these crimpers do a very, very good job for regular terminal connections. The next up is another set of Kleins. I believe these are the J2158CRs. I believe that's their model number. And this one has a little bit broader of a punch to it, but we're gonna see what kind of results we get out of this one as well. Now on this one, I'm gonna have to do it a little bit differently because the punch is offset to one side. So I'll get this set in there properly. Make sure that again, that we're on the opposite side of the seam, get that rotated. And now we can slip our wire in there. Once we have it, we can perform our crimp. Now this one also does a very good job, though it's a little bit more tedious to use because of the wider base to it, but it performs a very solid crimp as well. You notice that the, the 
crimp actually, or the terminal actually flattens out quite a bit with this one. And it provides a very solid crimp. So all three of these that we've tested in the first, first go around here have done really, really well. The next version we're going to be using are these Kleins. And if I'm not mistaken, the model number on here is actually the 1009 here on the bottom. We're going to be using, um, this is 14 gauge, so we're going to be using the bottom crimp here. So we'll want to set this in, make sure that we get it orientated properly, get it set, and then we can set our wire in here. And once we have it positioned, we can finish our crimp. Now this one also does a pretty decent job it has uh you know that because it has a little bit narrower jaw on the on the punch side of it it actually forms a very nice crimp as well so all four of these have done really really well and you can get really good results out of them now let's move into the pre-professional version and see what kind of results we get out of it Okay, so in the ratcheting style, we first want to open this up. So we'll just make sure that we're on the correct gauge. And then this one, the 1412, the 14 is right there in the center. We could actually use the 14 in two different places. I'm going to use it on the middle one. So I want to bring this down, make sure that my seam is in the right place. Kind of get it just where I want it to be crimped. And that looks pretty good. Yeah, maybe I'll shift it just a little bit. There we go. Okay, now we'll set our wire in there, make sure we get it in the proper place, and now we'll ratchet it up. Now, this one gets a much, much more solid connection. Now, it's flattened out a bit like the rest of them, uh, but I like the ball detent on this particular style of crimper. Uh, it just seems to form a better crimp to me and it looks a little smoother than some of those others so let's look at them we'll cut some of these up and we'll compare them side by side see which one you like best so if i can remember the order of these our first one here is the last one that we did this is with our, our ratcheting style the Klein 3000 cr i like how well that's done the next one is another one of my favorites this is the klein curve that has that trapezoidal punch to it it ended up bowing it just a little bit but that's very easy to straighten back out and the crimp has come down very very firmly and this is a very solid connection our next one was with the smaller carlisles they did a very good job as well and the next one this one I can't remember which was which here. This one, I believe, is with our punch version or our stamp version of the Kleins. It did a pretty good job as well, flattened out nice. And then finally, our last one was done with the with this version of the Kleins, which also performed a very good crimp. So in all, they, you know, at the end of the day, you don't necessarily have to have a ratcheting style but the benefit to these is that you can switch between different styles so let's look at some of the insulated connectors now we're going to be using this same tool as well as a couple of the others to highlight the differences okay the first up is going to be our stamp version of our clients here we'll make sure that we set this on here now the orientation for this is the seam is on the upside of this so we want to make sure that we have this in this orientation so we'll get this one set make sure that we are centered as much as possible and then we can crimp it down and in the end it produces a pretty solid crimp I like the fact that we're using you can notice as we mentioned a couple times now that the punch portion of these types of crimpers isn't enough to penetrate through the insulation and so i like using this version on your standard insulated terminal connections next up is our stamp version and because we're using blue terminals for 14 gauge we want to match that correctly now in this particular case it makes no difference which side we're going on because we don't have a punch rather we have half moon on either side so we'll just crimp that down as tight as we can and release it and in the end it does a pretty good job and you notice with the non-insulated terminals or the non-insulated crimpers it doesn't pierce down into that insulation quite as much as the others so even though these are pretty cheap you can still get fairly good results out of them
Okay, for our last connection, we're going to be using our ratcheting tool. We want to make sure that we get this orientated properly so that the seam is actually on the wider portion over here. So once we get that set and get it orientated properly, we can crimp that down. And you see that it actually makes a double crimp connection. And this one is actually very, very solid because it's crimping in two different places. Now, this one flattens out quite a bit. I actually prefer not to use the insulated version on insulated connectors, even with the ratcheting tool, but it's undeniable that it makes a very, very solid connection with that double press. Now, my personal preference is to use the non-insulated connectors. That way I can better see what type of, of crimp that I'm getting on them. And then we can run a little bit of heat shrink up to them and use a lighter to seal that up this is a three to one so it's going to seal up really really well around that wire and it just in my opinion it makes a better connection in the end once we get this heat shrink sealed around there uh, and then if you're using marine grade where it has adhesive on the inside it makes a uh, not quite a watertight seal because we have still have exposed terminal here but in my opinion, it just makes a very professional result, and that's why I like using this with heat shrink. So that's the final result that we get from our you know, non-insulated connector and a bit of heat shrink. The next type of crimp that we're going to be looking at are for ferrules. Now, ferrules go on the end of stranded wire whenever you're going to make terminal connections that are going to go off to a terminal block of some kind where they're going to have a screw that comes down on them. The purpose of that ferrule is to keep all that stranded wire from splaying out and thereby causing a weak connection. The two crimpers that we're going to be using for this, one is the Gardner Bender, which you'll notice has a much more elongated punch to its crimp. So it's going to crimp along the full width of the jaws. The same is true of the Kleins. We've I've insert, inserted the uh, the ferrule jaws into this one and this one kind of does a double crimp it has a gap in the center so it actually makes two crimps over a wide surface area now that's going to be different than when we're doing regular crimps like with the Klein curves that have more of just a single punch that come down for doing things like ring terminals and spades and forks and stuff of that nature so let me show you how these two compare to one another now, the first up is going to be the Gardner Benders. Now, these do a decent job on ferrules. Uh, they're more designed for ferrules, but the results can be kind of varied at times. So we're going to put it into the small... Now, there's several different holes that you can choose from, uh, but the one that we're going to be using is more gauge for this size of wire. This is 10 gauge. And we'll set it in there, and then all we have to do is just give it pressure and crimp it down. So we'll just make sure that we get a good solid crimp on it. And you notice how it crushes into it and it provides a just a, a real solid crimp to it. This does a pretty decent job though. It kind of flares out a little bit more. Let's try it with the clines and see what kind of result we get with that. Okay, so with the clines, we actually have our different gauges. 10 gauge is going to be our second notch up. So we'll set it on our 10 gauge and then we'll lock it in. And then all we have to do is ratchet it in. Now the connection on here is much, much more solid. You can see just how much more compact the wires get in there. And this connection is far superior to the one that we get with the Gardner Benders. Now both do satisfactory results, but you definitely get a much more professional result with the ratcheting style crimpers. In the end, depending on your application, any one of these crimpers can do a very good job for you. So if you're working on something like uh, wiring up trailers, rewiring brakes and lights and stuff like that on a trailer, where it needs to have a good crimp connection, but it doesn't necessarily need to be the best looking connection, any one of these tools will work fine for you. If you're doing more electrical based, where you're working on uh, stuff in a control panel, then I would recommend probably uh, any one of the clients, the gardener benders will work fine. But if you're working and you're looking for something that is the most versatile and is going to give you the most professional results, then I would highly recommend any t number of ratcheting style uh, crimpers where they're going to have a wide range to work with different types of crimps. These will give you the most professional results 
and the best terminal connections. My name is Ben. You've been watching the Texas Tool Crib. I appreciate you taking the time to watch. I'll see you in the next one.